assume that if you're out on tour for this movie, The Betsy, based on your book, that you have to be um, pretty much happy with the way it came out. Uh, Bobby, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay. Question. All Bobby, right. Uh, I can't work that out of Okay. Mr. Robbins, I have to assume that if you're on tour for The Betsy, the movie version of your book, that you have to be more or less pleased with the way it turned out. Is that right? Uh, that's true, Bobby. Actually, I've been displeased with many of the other films because I've been blamed for them, good, bad, or different, and also for the way they've distorted what the stories in the original novels were. For example, A Stone for Danny Fisher, which was about an, a boy in the east side of New York growing up, was changed to uh, New Orleans and Elvis Presley movie. And I th said to myself, someday, you know, like, I'll be able to afford it. We'll do our own films. The Betsy is the first of the theatrical films that we've done. And I'm really pleased with it because we've got a dynamite cast and a dynamite movie. Laurence Olivier is unbelievable. I think he's got an Academy Award winning performance in this film. He begins as a man of 86 and then in the flashbacks, you see him as a 40, 45 year old man, virile, dynamic, exciting. He, uh, he's romantic, he's sexy, he, he's really unbelievable. Robert Duval, who plays his grandson is marvelous. Catherine Ross, who plays uh, his daughter-in-law is, is unbelievably good. And then we have Tommy Lee Jones and Leslie Ann Downs, who are very exciting people in themselves. Tommy Lee, as remember, played in the amazing Howard Hughes. And in, in this film, he plays Angelo Perino, a race car driver who comes to help number one, who is Lawrence Olivier, build a new car, a people's car. Mr. Robbins, a lot of people, as they read the book and see the movie, they'll say, aha, the Ford people. Have you had any reaction from the Ford people on this? I think that, you know, we often say, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Or is truth stranger than fiction? Which comes first, truth or fiction? In today's life, life moves so quickly that today's fiction is tomorrow's fact. And tomorrow's fact, you know, is very often the fiction of the day after that. So we keep turning and discovering ourselves over and over and over. Mr. Robbins, a story that we're all keeping a close watch on these days is the fact that Mr. Krim has left United Artists and has taken a number of executives with him. Mm -hmm. And the stock market is very active as far as allied artists. This is the company that has released your movie, The mm -hmm. Betsy. What, what do you know about this whole thing? Is Mr. Krim going to, to buy into Allied well, Artists? As you, <coughs> that I do not know. Uh, as you know, Allied Artists and United Artists are partners in the financing and distribution of the movie. Allied Artists distributes it in the United States and Canada and United Artists in the rest of the world. My own particular involvement with Arthur Krim, uh, Bob Benjamin, and the crowd goes back many years when I was at Universal. And uh, Krim and Benjamin were heads of Eagle Lion Films, which is the rank company. And I worked with them when they bought the old United Artists Company. I think the activity in Allied Artists stock, I think reflects the growing confidence in the future of that particular company. I think that they are becoming much more active in film production than they have been for the past few years. And I think it reflects the fact that they will make more pictures. I don't know, uh, and I can't imagine whether Arthur Krim and Bob Benjamin would uh, come into Allied Artists because uh, these are very wealthy men and men who, at one time, as you know, Krim came out of retirement four or five years ago when United Artists had problems, went back to work till it straightened out. I don't know whether he wants to assume the burden at his time of life of uh, building up another film company. When both uh, Bob Benjamin and Arthur Cribb have expressed the desire to commit more of their time to uh, public life and, you know, uh, uh, government work of, you know, in ways that they can be of help. What, though, do you think has been their disenchantment with Transamerica, their parent company, the conglomerate? Well, basically, I think it's, it's, it's the usual problem, having lived through a number of these things myself. Uh, one of the um, additional forms of compensation given to major motion picture executives or major executives of any company 
is that if the company is successful, they have an opportunity to exercise options for stock and that the stock that they exercise, if the company is successful, uh, you know, the prices of that stock reflect it and go up. Now, the tr in the Transamerica conglomerate, uh, where United Artists is just a portion of that, uh, it is not a large enough portion, despite the fact that United Artists is so tremendously successful, to really affect the stock of the Transamerica Corporation so that the executives themselves don't have a chance to, uh, you know, take their stock, sell it, and get capital gains, which is a much lower tax rate than others. And without these perks, as they're called, it must become very, very difficult for Krim and Benjamin to continually uh, renew their executive personnel because every other company can give them all these things. So I, I think there was the basic problem. Uh, I don't know how it will be resolved, but I know that uh, United Artists is in a solid foundation. They still have a very good management. Andy Pleskow, their new president, is a man who's been there for 29 years, and I've known him for a long while. Dan Reasoner, who is the, their new head of production, was formerly head of European production for Warner Brothers. I've worked with Dan. As a matter of fact, uh, we're doing The Pirate for Warner Brothers CBS, and this is one of the deals I made when Dan was still at Warner Brothers about four years ago. He then came to United Artists as East Coast production head, and now he will be their uh, worldwide production chief, and he is very capable. I think United Artists will continue to do well, and. I'm pretty sure that 